The temperatures outside have dropped significantly. Boats are heading into their boat yards to be put away for the winter. Bait fish are now fleeing down south, bringing our chances of catching stripers, bluefish, sea bass, fluke down south with them. But there is another option that we have up here in the northeast as far as fish to catch in the fall and winter months, and that is the rainbow smelt. Hi guys, welcome to my YouTube channel, Dave D Fishing. So in this video, I'm gonna be showing you how to fish for smelt using a fiberglass pole. And the same things will apply to those cane poles that you might have. Um, cane poles are pretty cheap. They're probably like 10 bucks and they usually run about eight to 10 feet long. I have in my hand here a fiberglass rod that's all one piece. Cane rods usually come in two pieces. Um, these are really simple, simple fishing rods to use. Um, I'll show you how to use this. And I will be showing you how to use a spinning rod outfit with a sabiki rig. Um, usually sabiki rigs, I like to work the bottom of the water column. The fiberglass rod slash cane rod that you might have is really good at working the other parts of the water column. I usually use this for the top third of the water column or halfway down. That's where it really shines. It does best on low-lying docks. I would not use this from a, a dock that's more than two feet off the water. Otherwise, the line's gonna be swinging around. It's not gonna be fun. It's gonna be, bait's gonna be pulled around by the wind. Um, that's when you should use a spinning rod. But, all right guys, so here we go. This video, this first part of the video is mainly me showing you how to use the rods. I don't plan on catching anything. It's beautiful outside, we got sun. So let me show you how to use these and then hopefully I'll be able to go out night fishing or fishing during the evening and hopefully get something. So a couple different fish you might get. So obviously we're after a rainbow smelt. You might catch butterfish, you might catch Atlantic mackerel, whiting, a couple different types of herring, shad around, stripers, baby bluefish. There is all kinds of stuff around this time of year in October. This October is a little unusual. It's still really warm out. The water is about 60 degrees right now. Normally in October, the water is down in the 50s, and that's when the smelts are more apt to be in the larger smelt. The smaller smelt usually come in September. Those are those two to four or five inch smelt. And then once the water gets colder, the 40s and 50s, that's when you start seeing the larger jack, jack smelt, as they call them. Those jack smelt, I usually count them as over, anything over eight inches. I don't know what the actual um, real specifications are to those jack smelt, but I say over eight inches for those jack smelt. Um, you might get snagged on peanut bunker. There are millions of them behind me right now. Yeah, let's get to the video, show you how to use the rods, hopefully get some fish in. If not during the day, hopefully we'll get some at night. Okay, so here's my fiberglass nine foot one piece rod. The Dacron line that I'm using is internally routed. So it ends up coming out here, a little glow in the dark bead at the top to make it a little easier to see the bites at night. And you look down here and that's where you wind your line on. No fancy stuff here at all. I think that's like 50 pound Dacron. And right here is where the line goes into the rod and comes out the end. Pretty simple stuff. Nice and flexible rod, easy to see the small bites. You get, with the rod, with this one in particular that I bought, it comes with a 50 pound Dacron right here. Then it comes with the loop with the little crimp right there making that loop. And then I attached an egg sinker. And this piece with the snap swivel allows me to take the snap off and I could also switch this egg sinker out pretty quickly. And then I pre-tied a rig. So I have a little surgeon's loop right here. And then it goes down probably, let's see, three feet or so. And then I have a surgeon's loop at the very bottom of the rig. And then I have a little dropper's loop about a foot above that. And then I'm just using these little Danielson Aberdeen hooks. They're really cheap. Size eight seems to be the best to use. And it works pretty well with most of the baits you're gonna be using like grass shrimp mud minnows and even sea worms like this. So I'm gonna try with the sea worm first because the tide was too high for me to go and catch grass shrimp. So got a day off and I just wanna make the most of what I got. If you choose to go with my setup, this is how I do it. And I'm just showing you how to put the sinker on. 
And to take it off, it's obviously in reverse. So grab your line, that loop, pinch it flat, push your egg sinker on, just like so. And that crimp keeps the sinker from sliding up. So fold the loop back over on itself, grab your snap, go through run side. There you go, just like that. Nice and simple, strong. Do half your snap. Now you're going to put on whatever rig you choose to use, which I will show you in this video. Just like so. Nice and simple. Here are four simple smelt rigs that you can use with a spinning rod or on a bamboo or fiberglass rod. So the bottom one is the simplest. It is simply a snelled hook, pre-tied one, and it goes straight to your main line with a split shot on it. That is the most simple way. And again, you could use these on spinning rods or bamboo. Next one up is the one I will be using on my fiberglass pole. Two hooks set up, just like so. Drop a loop on the uppermost part and then a surgeon's loop on the bottom. If you don't like the egg sinker method that I use, you can also use split shots and you can put it right about here. It seems to work really well and you could adjust the weight by adding or removing split shots. This third one, very simple, double dropper loop, sinker on the bottom. Nothing crazy. And then this one on the top is a sabiki rig. I cut them down from six to three. And I just add a sinker on the bottom. Another option with the top two you can add, instead of a sinker, you can put your jig or spoon on the bottom, just like so, just for some little extra attraction. It seems to work really well. No matter which of the rigs you choose to use, you still have to put your pre-tied hook on. So take the loop of the pre-tied hook, put it over the loop of the rig, take your hook and put that hook through this piece right here, this loop, then you pull it tight. That is all you do. It's really strong and it is also makes it really simple to change out your hooks if need be. If you choose to use sandworms, aka sea worms, for your bait, this is how you do it, and it applies to sabiki rigs and the pre-tied hooks that I showed you earlier. Pinch off a half-inch piece of the sea worm, it's like so. Grab your hook, and then thread it onto your hook, and try not to leave any tag ends loose off the end of the hook because those little bait stealers can pull it off easier. And for the minnows, just poke it right through the bottom of the lip and out through the top. Simple as that. These little tiny bait fish stay alive for quite a long time. Here is the grass shrimp, and this is one of the most common baits you'll see being used for smelt up here in the northeast. When you're handling the shrimp, you just got to be careful that you are aware of this horn on the front. Let me see if I get a good visual of it. So right there. So when you plunge your hands into a bucket or a little um, box of these things, just be aware. Um, a lot of times little kids go smelt fishing and I don't want, you don't want them to get hurt. This isn't pleasant. So it's not too bad, but it's not pleasant. So I'm going to show you the most simplest way to put this on the hook first. So you grab your hook, whether it be on a sabiki rig or just a generic hook like this. Flip the shrimp over, grab them by the head, roll them over like this. And you take your hook and you plunge it through the bottom of the tail, right about here. And you thread it on. That's really it. That's all you do. So it will present in the water just like that and it is perfect. Um, I'm going to show you a couple other different ways, one of which I do all the time and it's my go-to. Okay, next method. So grab your shrimp like this, head still on. You're gonna take your shrimp, sort of fold his tail under just like that, just like that, and you're gonna, hold on, let me just get this going. And you're gonna go just like that. So you can do that as well, that works just fine. 
And let me show you the last way, which is my favorite way. All right, so the last way that I do, I'm sure there's probably more ways to hook these things. So I generally just use the tail of the shrimp. It is my favorite. Um, so you grab the tail of the shrimp, grab the head, and you just give it a twist. And it'll pop right off. Just like so, it looks just like that. And then you take the hook of your choice. Again, applies to a sabiki rig or plain hook like this. And you just take the hook and I, and I hold the shrimp like this and I actually hook it sort of counterintuitively. I don't go with the curve of the shrimp. And just put it on just like that, perfect. So the reason why I hook the shrimp this way is because I want the hook point more exposed if I were to run the hook along the curvature of the shrimp, I feel like the tail of the shrimp blocks the point of the hook and you will lose a lot more smelt that way. This works for me. I've been doing it for years and I'm going to stick with it. The smaller piece of bait, I feel like obviously gets into the smelt's mouth a little bit better as well. This is how the method I just showed you looks on a sabiki rig. Now to the rod use. All right guys, to use this fiberglass rod, same things apply to a cane rod if that's what you have. All you do is let out some line. I like to work the top of the water column down. So you just let out some line. I'm going to work the first third of the water column. It's pretty deep here. So I'm going to do about six feet. So that's all you do. This keeps your line in place. It keeps the same depth in case you find the fish. You don't have to keep sort of guessing where they are. You know you just caught them there. So you'll be swinging the fish in like this taking them off the hook and then tossing it back. So, all right, we're starting from the beginning again. So you already set your depth that you want. So all you do is swing this out as far as you can, just like that. And you're gonna be setting your rod, obviously on the dock. If the fish are biting good, just hold the rod. So when that bait and that rig is actually swinging towards you, that's usually when the fish will bite, you'll see subtle pulls on there, really small pulls, or you'll see taps on there, and that's when you go and set the hook. Um, again, if you're getting a lot of bites, hold the rod. And I like to put at least half the rod on the dock because there are still stripers around and there's like mackerel and that type of thing, and you obviously don't want to lose your rod. Um, if you don't get a bite in the first five minutes or so, pull your rig up, let out about another foot or two of line like that and do it again it is really that simple um, i love this type of fishing it gets down to basics you don't have to do much and you're just sort of sitting and waiting and that's sort of the fun part about it so you can talk to your friend or whatever and just mess around and have a good time if by the time you get down to the bottom and you don't get a bite I would reset and pull the line back up to that first third of the water column and work your way back down. But the thing is, if you've been to that spot two or three hours and you haven't gotten a bite, it might be time to move spots. So smelts are really finicky as far as the spots they like to sit. You can move 15 feet down to your right or left and they, the fish will be sitting right there, which is sort of frustrating, but that's part of smelt fishing. So that is it. And now let me show you how to use the sabiki rig on a spinning rod over there. To use a sabiki rig on the spinning rod setup, I like to work the bottom first, toss it out. Let it hit the bottom. Once it's on the bottom, you see the line go slack just like that. It's not sinking anymore. Lift up your rod, take up the slack. And then you just work it on the bottom towards you. You can shimmy it all the way towards you, or you can lift and let it fall and hit the bottom. And you just reel up that slack and work every couple feet towards you. Like that. You do little shimmies on the bottom. And you just let it sit about five seconds once you're on the bottom because the smelt may come over and hit it or they'll hit it as it's falling. Um, and you can also use a sabiki rig to work other levels of the water column. Just don't let out line enough to hit the bottom. Use a lighter sinker when you're doing this. If you're sort of working the middle of the water column, it works better. It's slower sinking so the smell can hit it. I'm using a one ounce right here. You could use like a quarter ounce, that'd be better. You just want the bait to fall slower. 
And that's all you do. And if you're really lazy, you can just put it on the dock, wait for bites. Easy fishing. Okay guys, so you reached the end of the smelt fishing video. It's more of a tutorial, um, a little bit of an overview on the rods I like to use. So I did show you a fiberglass rod um, and also a spinning rod with a speaky rig. And I also have a third rod that I can show you guys in a different video. So it is a hybrid fly rod with a little spinning reel on there. I love this thing. It's a little cheesy, but it works. Um, you have the advantages of the reach and castability of a spinning reel. You can't cast as far with this thing because of the way the fly rod guides are. They're generally like a twisted piece of um, metal for the guides and they're not really shaped right, but they get the job done. They work really well. Used fly rods are really easy to get and you could slap a cheap 10, $15 reel on there and call it a day. Um, yeah, you can cast farther. Bamboo rod slash fiberglass poles like I have, they have a limited distance. And as I said earlier, just to recap, I don't like using that type of rod in water deeper than about 15 feet or so. Because generally when the fish are starting to bite, you wanna flip those fish way up and flip them into your hands, take the fish off and then chuck it back in. You don't wanna be doing too much work when you're using those poles because they obviously don't have a reel on it. Um, I showed you a couple different baits that I like to use. So my favorite is the grass shrimp. They're durable little things. You can store them for a pretty long. I've had them in the fridge for I think a week and a half at the most. If you're taking care of them, you're, you're making sure their container is clean. They last a long time. Um, mud minnows are super durable. I, those things will last weeks in the fridge. Again, if you keep them wet, you make sure their containers clean. They work great. Sea worms, they work excellent, but they're 13, I think right now I'm paying 13 bucks for a dozen of them and they don't last as long. If one of them gets a cut on them or gets damaged to them, that blood actually will kill the other sea worms. And yeah, once you cut it, once you cut one of them and you can't really, I don't, I never throw a cut sea worm back in the box ever. It goes on a separate piece of paper or on top of the box. I never throw the sea worm back in the box. Um, but that's really it. And again, I'm going to cut this smelt fishing business into two episodes. So this episode was sort of the how-to brief overview, generalities. In the next video, um, when I get a day off of work, I'm going to try and go fishing for smelt. I'm going to try it during the daytime. We'll see if it works. Some years I feel like the smelt fishing is really good in the daytime. Last year was one of those years where I killed it during the daytime. I went out for an hour one day and caught, I think it was 70 something with my son and like an hour or so, it was great. Um, and then some years the smelt bite only at night. This year so far of what I've seen, after work I'll go take a peek down at the docks and that type of thing. I still see sizable stripers around, there small keepers cruising around. So I don't know, we'll see what happens. But um, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hope you learned something or at least found it entertaining. And just keep an eye out for my video that's gonna be coming out soon. And feel free to drop comments down there, like, and please subscribe. Thank you.